Hello and welcome to on Stop Wrestling Chat. My name is Barry and today we're here to do This Week in Wrestling, episode 12 I think it is. Guys, we're going to be looking back over This Week in Wrestling, talking about some of the key points that I feel from this and looking forward to this weekend's pay-per-view. I've already done a video on that, but I do want to kind of talk about why I'm feeling kind of underwhelmed about it. So I'm going to cover all that in today's kind of show. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and that beautiful notification bell because every time you hit... Those buttons, it makes me giggle like a little girl inside. I feel like I'm getting a new toy as a kid. I don't know where I was going with that, but um, I wait there for 11 seconds. Go let me know in the comments what you thought about this week in wrestling, and I'll get back in, back to you within the next 11 seconds. <laughs> Cool, so after fumbling my way through that freaking start bit of the <laughs> show, let's get into this, guys. So, I want to open today's show by talking about, about the Owen Hart, uh, the Owen Hart Foundation tournament, women's and men. We're kind of down to the, the last eight here, so we're, we're we're in it. I'm excited for this. We've got Tony Storm in versus Jamie Hayter, Britt Baker versus Joker Mystery competitor, Rio versus Ruby Soho. Red Velvet versus Sheeta. Britt Baker's mystery uh, opponent, I would love to be Prusel. I think that would just make sense. For me, it would make sense. I know she's an impact, and we are going to talk about that a little bit later in the show, but I think that would be a fantastic way of just building that relationship with Impact. Do you know what I mean? And I really think that would be a good way. She's probably one of the best women wrestlers on the planet today. And it'll be cool to have her in this as well. Baker goes over, that's fine. But I think Prusel should go over. Big shock over Baker getting eliminated. And it plays into that kind of heel environment that she's in. On the male side, Ray Phoenix, Kyle O'Reilly. I'm excited for that. We've got Samoa Joe against a Joker. Uh, Jeff Hardy, Darby Allen is going to be fucking insane in it. Adam Cole versus um, Dax Hardwood. So I think Cole's going to go through there. Uh, Hardy and Allen, I don't care who goes through, but I think Darby Allen's the one who's kind of going to go in there. Um, Phoenix and O'Reilly. I'd probably say O'Reilly's going to go through. Uh, just, I, I don't know with that one, because I, I like both of those guys. Samoa Joe and the mystery opponent. So let's talk about the mystery. I know there's a lot of people saying it could be this, could be this. I think it would be fantastic if it was like a Cesaro coming in. Or if it was like a somebody we don't expect. I mean, somebody that we we're we're not. I know they're doing the, the new Japan stuff and all that kind of stuff. I really hope it'll be somebody that we don't expect, like a Cesaro or like a I don't know, just somebody we don't know. Do you know what I mean? Somebody we're, we're not expecting to come in and the the go over on Joe. I think that would be fantastic. Um, up in the women's one, just. I gave my thoughts on that one now. I think uh, Jamie Hayter should go over on Tony, Tony Storm just to give her a little bit further but I think Tony Storm will probably get the win depending who Baker's kind of uh, opponent is I think Baker should go over but if it's Prusel I think she should go Rio against Soho Ruby Soho should go over um, Red Velvet against Sheeta I think Velvet should go over as well but um, I think there's a ton of like that Hardy Allen match is going to be fucking fantastic, and I hope we get to see that in a more like chaotic environment and <laughs> get some ladder steel cage or some shit in there, and just like these two guys can do a lot. But then we could see these guys maybe I don't know. Maybe we could see these guys knowing each other out here, and they don't both disqualified or whatever. It's there could be some story coming from this, but anyway. Going to talking about AEW while we're here. So they had Morrissey and Prusel on the show. Prusel dropped the belt, given that she's an impact. I wasn't too happy about this. I'd, I, I'm, I'd have liked to have seen her keep the title here longer. Um, I really think it would have made more sense to have Prusel, who's a fantastic wrestler, keep the title. Um, and then we had Morrissey as well. Now this guy looks fantastic. Do you know what I mean? I, I've always liked... Uh, big, big cast, Morrissey. I always thought he looked cool. Um, 
and he's got that big look, you know what I mean, the stuff that WWE would like. And I know Burroughs Article's going around saying that they were really excited from seeing him there and they're looking at getting him back in. I didn't think they should have, AEW shouldn't have done what they've done against Wardlow. Now I know they're building this guy up, he looks fantastic as well. He's, he's got the look. Now I know they're building him up, right? But what I would have done, this could have been one of those, shit, that was a fantastic fucking match this guy had moment. I think Wardlow against Morrissey should have been a hard hitting fucking they do all the hardcore shit for no reason half the time there's reason here to just try to beat the hell out of each other and maybe have another match between them at another point but I think this would have been cool doing it like that just beating the shit out of each other just hard move after hard move after hard move chair comes in ref's knocked out so there's a chair there's they, they, they get a table involved they get a they get, I don't know like a mic awesome um, to tag a kind of feeling uh, I think that would have been like an ECW one night stand that kind of feeling I know one's bigger one's short but I think just two big monsters banging against each other would have been fucking fantastic just showing us what we want to see you know what I mean these two big monsters just going at it I think would have been great now moving to Jade Cargo here she has been fantastic recently. The body section thing's working. She's making that belt seem cute. She's actually making that belt seem more important than the world. Uh, the women's world title for AEW. I'm thinking she's obviously going to be getting that belt soon. But she's just fantastic. And she? she's really... She's went from somebody that I couldn't stand and didn't want to see to somebody that I look forward to watching every single week. Guys, AEW do have issues happening as well. We can see that there's issues. I know there are AEW New Japan stuff. I think it's sold out. It's fantastic. I mean, it's it is a niche product. Obviously, you go to Twitter and everybody thinks that everybody's fucking wrong, but it's a niche and a niche. Wrestling's a niche and New Japan is a niche within that niche for Western audiences, which is understandable. AEW would be a niche within the niche for the Japanese audiences. But the thing is, they've, they've done well here. I hope we're going to get good matches and we're not just going to see tag teams and tag teams this and tag teams that and three tag teams and three man and six man and I just want to see good matches. What New Japan does best, I want to see that good, strong style match and westernise it as well. Bring the westernised style to it and let's see it happen because I think that would be fantastic but we'll see what goes there and that brings us back to the the impact thing is Tony Khan more up the arse of fucking New Japan because he's a fan of that than what he is of impact I would have like a Morrissey and Wardlow could have been a, such a great match and it would just it fell short now I know what would have been for the fans that there's no flips there's no this but it's just two guys beating shit out of each other and what more can we ask for that? It's what wrestling is at the end of the day. But over at WWE, um, we'll talk about Impact as well. We've got Impact Under Siege, I think, this weekend. Impact's been doing good. I'm not going to watch it. I'll probably catch a clip or two. Maybe a match or two if I, if I check it out. I uh, check out a review and it says it's good. I was going to sit down and watch it, but I'm not really a big Impact fan at the minute. I've just, I kind of fell out with them. I feel that they do the same thing over and over and over again and I don't think we ever get that resolution from it do you know what I mean I don't think we ever get we just get the same stories just with a couple of different wrestlers in it but it is what it is we're back to WWE <sighs> this weekend guys I am not fucking interested in this at all um, Steve commented on my SCW Steve go support him if you have any fantastic content creator I was on his show last night so go check that out. We're reviewing King of the Ring 1994. Um, always a lot of fun being on Steve's channel. Um, he does a lot of stuff with Jonesy Chats Wrestling as well. He's a fantastic guy too. Go check out both of those guys. And anybody you see me share. They all do great work. But um, she was saying that Ronda and Charlotte is kind of going to be going on to Hell in the Cell. And same as Cody and Seth. Um, and they're going to put that inside Hell in the Cell. Cody and Seth I can get because it only started at WrestleMania. But we're getting three pay-per-views at it. Ronda and Charlotte, I feel they don't need to have this going on as long as what they have. 
I really think we should just be ending this soon. I really do. Um, this pay per view this weekend, I'm just not in the mood for it at all. And like I said at the start, there, WWE is offering the wrestling world up to AEW and a platter. They are. They want somebody to compete with them, like a WCW. I feel. I feel they want somebody to be there and compete with them, so they can start this back and forth, fucking war that will get more eyes on it, get more fun. Don't go watch these guys. We're going to watch their WWE's going to Manchester, but AEW's in Newcastle. WWE's in Edinburgh. AEW's in Glasgow. Like just that fucking pettiness of war that they can have and I wouldn't be surprised if WWE's reached out to Tony Khan and was like look we're going to release these guys you pick them up we can start to compete against each other and stuff like that I think that would that makes only logical business sense do you know what I mean and the problem is is wrestling at the point when we need a competition like that I don't know but WWE needs something they really, really do. Because this weekend's pay-per-view, I don't even know if I want, to, I want to tune in to watch it. I'm going to review it, so I'm not going to watch it, but it's just... NXT is done a show this week and it was actually good. They had a triple threat on it, which was really good. Um, NXT is having some good matches in it, for what it is. I mean, I'm not taking anything... It's nothing, nothing major, nothing special. It is what it is. Um, and they've had some good matches on it but then over in WWE, the actual main roster WWE they have the talent there to do things I mean I think Cody Rhodes is probably going to be the guy that dethrones Roman Drew looks like he's going to be the guy coming up to dethrone him and all but they were going to do that stuff with Nakamura and then they have it they, I mean imagine this weekend if we were talking about we had unification match between the two tag teams ending a DQ or a tag team debuts or runs out and Fucking Edge and Damien Priest run out and attack both tag teams, causing a DQ, saying that they want to be the people that unify the titles and it leads to a, something different. I think that'd have been cool, um, but we're not going to get that. We, we could have had Nakamura versus Roman. But no, Nakamura's not going to win, but it could have put on a good match. Anyway, guys, that's just me having a wee rant about this week in wrestling. I'm keeping this short and sweet today, so I'm going to love you to leave you there. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that beautiful notification bell. Go check out me on SCW Steve's show, um, reviewing King of the Ring. There's a bunch of me over there as well and a bunch of other great retro reviews over there. And uh, yeah, guys, thanks for all the support. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, you guys have been growing this channel. And I know a lot of you might not like what I say, but I'm telling you what I feel. That's what this channel is. It's what I'm thinking about wrestling. If you disagree with me, that's fine. Let me know why you disagree with me and why that I'm wrong. And then we can chat. That's the whole point of this. Oh, we don't need to agree on everything, right? We don't need to... This wrestling's meant to be fun. Stop fucking arguing. Twitter, especially. Stop arguing. We don't need to moan about everything. Somebody doesn't agree with you. That's all right. You don't think Bret Hart versus Owen Hart in the steel cage at SummerSlam is the best steel cage match ever. You're completely wrong. But uh, <laughs> that's fine. It's the, just enjoy it, guys. We're not fucking going to be arguing about something that nobody's going else is going to really know what we're arguing about let's just just enjoy it hope you have a good weekend guys i'll see you back here monday for that review and hopefully i'm no ranting but let's see how it goes so far it looks like it's going to be a fun rant see you then guys